Good morning, everyone. My name is Ray Chan, and I'm the technical web making support for Inertia Specific. The topic of today's webinar is on complex new trends for vintage 2020. As a brief overview on the presentation, we'll go over some basic chemistry background on the importance of fermentation neutrons, um, amino acid composition and juice, the role of yeast assimilable nitrogen, different nutrient requirements at various stages of fermentation, and explaining a bit on why amino acids, ammonia, minerals, vitamins, steroids, and fatty acids all have various important role in assisting the smooth completion of a fermentation. And finally, we'll be looking at the various complex nutrient products um, an artist offer. So during fermentation, um, sufficient nutrient source is an essential requirement for the yeast. As yeast utilize such source to carry out a smooth fermentation and to support healthy cell growth in the media. The main source um, of nutrient for yeast is nitrogen. Nitrogen has a few key roles in yeast metabolism. So first of all, it is involved in synthesizing um, proteins, stimulates the uh, multiplication of yeast cells at onset of fermentation, and it supports the yeast metabolism to maintain active throughout the course preventing any stressful scenarios where yeast could potentially generate off aromas, namely H2S, hydrogen sulfide, and mercaptans. And it also stimulates the production of volatile aromatic compounds during fermentation. So nitrogen is naturally present in grapes in the form of amino acids. However, um, we found that the level of nitrogen available is not universal and depends um, heavily on multiple viticulture factors. So for, say, the richness of your soil in the vineyards, any external application of fertilizer, um, varietal differences, etc. And most of the time, we do found that the low of nitrogen in grapes is insufficient for yeast to complete a smooth fermentation. And as a response to that, it is quite common for winemakers to rely on external nutrient supplementation. Taking a closer look at the amino acid composition in grapes, here we present a table of the average amino acid composition in different varieties. Although the level of individual compounds varies across the varieties, you can see that for all different grape varieties, proline and arginine here are the two um, compounds with the highest concentration. Together, they usually make up around 70% of the total nitrogen content in grapes. But note that proline is considered a secondary amino acid, and yeast cannot utilize secondary amino acids. What secondary amino acid essentially means is that these compounds lack of a free NH2 group, and yeast needs this free NH2 group to form peptide bonds here between two amino acids and convert them into um, building units for yeast cells. On the left, you have the um, chemical structure of different amino acids, and know that proline is the only one lacks a free NH2 group on the compound. So this essentially means that the amount of nitrogen content in your grapes does not, uh, does not directly translate to the amount of nitrogen available for yeast to utilize in fermentation. In fact, when we're talking about nutrient, aka the nitrogen source for yeast, we're referring to the terminology of yeast assimilable nitrogen, um, abbreviated as YEN. So YEN consists of, firstly, um, primary amino nitrogen, hence the amino acids with the free NH2 group, and then um, ammonia ions. Primary amino nitrogen is also referred to the organic nitrogen, so this can be either from amino acids in grapes or um, external source of um, additives. Ammonia, on the other hand, is considered as an inorganic nutrient, and the most commonly available format of the inor uh, inorganic nutrient in the market is diammonium and phosphate, DAP, and ammonia usually comes from um, external sources. As a general guideline, a yen level lower than 150 ppm has been known to be a cause of um, slow sluggish or stuck fermentation. As a standard, it is recommended to have your total yen level adjusted to between 200 and 250 ppm. Of course, um, the specific level requirement depends on other factors as well, namely the maturity level of your grapes at harvest, so your bricks or bone. Um, variety also plays a difference, and then yeast ranks will also have um, various level of nutrient requirements. 
And it's important to note that nitrogen is not the only nutrient you will need for maintaining a healthy yeast growth and fermentation. Um, other nutrients include vitamins, essential minerals, steroids, fatty acids, and lipids. And we'll go into the details of the chemistry behind these compounds in the next few slides. Traditionally, um, it is general practice for many wineries to adjust the yen level induced by addition of the inorganic nitrogen depth in one instance, usually an inoculation or right after the onset of fermentation. However, as more research has been developed to investigate the way of how yeast take up different sources of nutrients in recent years, a new set of guidelines um, has been developed. So we suggest against adding nutrient um, all in once, first to avoid any residual nitrogen compounds once the fermentation is finished. This could lead to higher level of biogenic amines, urea, ethyl carbamates, and these are all considered to be harmful compounds at high level. And residual nutrient can also be utilized by undesirable microbes to generate spoilage. In addition, um, a sudden yeast biomass growth and surge of the heat produced by red pit fermentation kinetics can actually lead to an early self-death and uh, sluggish fermentation. So then, consequently, the formation of reductive aromas and elevated volatile acidity. So the best strategies would be to take into consideration of the timing of nutrient add and provide yeast specific nutritional needs at the moment when yeast is able to assimilate them. So the rule of thumb would be during lag phase, that's 0 to 24 hours after the onset of fermentation, to provide amino acids, aka your primary amino nitrogen, um, vitamins and essential minerals, accounting for half of the total nutrient add. And then during the exponential phase here, around one third of sugar depletion, to supplement ammonia, steroids, fatty acids, and also oxygen if necessary. And these accounts for the second half of the total nutrient target. The reason to separate supplementation of organic nitrogen and inorganic nitrogen is that yeast will always prefer ammonia over amino acids. So ammonia and amino acids are both transported inside the yeast cells with the help of an active transport system, which attach the um, either ammonia or amino acids to a hydrogen ion and then push them through the membrane. Compared to the amino acids, um, ammonia has a smaller molecular size and it's easier to transfer. And certain amino acids group also require the help of permease enzymes, which might be inhibited under the presence of ammonia. So this is why you need to add your organic nitrogen up front, as ammonia ions require less work to be consumed. If both of them are present, yeast will always take up the ammonia instead of the amo uh, amino acids. So think of yeast as a kid where the kid will always prefer fast food, aka your ammonia, over a healthy balanced meal, that's your amino acids. So the healthy meal um, amino acids facilitate the biomass buildup of the yeast up front, stimulates yeast growth, and certain amino acids can also serve as um, aroma precursors. On the other hand, the fast food um, ammonia can stimulate yeast growth and maintain the metabolism rate, hence this is rather useful during a later stage of fermentation. Amount of primary amino acids, um, yeast also absorb them at different rates. So the most quickly absorbed ones are um, aspartic acid, glutamic acid, serine, lysine, etc. And these are used to form peptide bands, undergo protein synthesis, build up yeast cells, hence generating the biomass. The moderately absorbed amino acid groups here can be used to form biomass as well, but some also serves as um, aroma precursors. So how this works is that when yeast utilize the amino acids, higher alcohol is formed as a byproduct. And the higher alcohol themselves usually um, have a fusel-like odor when they're over the sensory threshold, but some of them also respond both for fruity aromas. And then an enzymatic activity called um, yeast esterase activity converts these higher alcohol into ethyl esters and um, acetate esters which are the major compounds responsible for the fruity and floral aromas in wines. So here's a list of the amino acids as um, aroma precursors, their corresponding higher alcohol and esters, and aromatic description of the compounds. So some common ones you might be familiar with are, for example, here isoamyl acetate, 
originated from a mean acid leucine, is described as um, banana-y, purish, and um, a very common ester to be found in fruity white wines. Another one, to phenyl acetate here, formed from the amino acid phenylalanine, um, is described as rose, honey, flowery, and very commonly found in varieties such as Pinot Noir and Syrah. In regards to essential minerals and vitamins, um, they are important as they are integrated in the pathway of glycolysis and the generation of NHD+. So in a nutshell, um, glycolysis is when glucose, the sugar compound, is converted into pyruvate. And pyruvate needs vitamins and minerals in order to be metabolized to ethanol and carbon dioxide, generating um, NHD+. Vitamins such as thiamine um, being used as a cofactor in the alcoholic fermentation pathway also stimulates yeast growth, speeds up the fermentation rate, and reduces production of sulfur binding compounds. Minerals, on the other hand, again being involved in the alcoholic fermentation pathway, they help with maintaining uh, fermentation metabolism activities. Lastly, um, looking at steroids, lipids, and fatty acids. These compounds are particularly important when, first of all, um, you have an initial um, sugar level that's relatively high, hence a potential high alcohol um, content, or when you've seen uh, signs of sluggish fermentation in a particular tank or there are specific vineyard blocks and fruit sources known to be problematic. So steroids and lipids are naturally synthesized within the yeast cells from monoterpenes. And they're also available as fermentation agents, um, often in the form of inactivated yeast cells. When they are naturally synthesized within the yeast cells, um, they integrate into the cell wall membrane, thicken it, hence enhance the resistance towards alcohol and other stress factors. When they are added externally, um, again, often available as additives for of inactivated yeast, the inactivated yeast fraction can absorb any toxic mid chain fatty acids formed during fermentation and detoxify the media. And the steroids and lipid will integrate into yeast cells wall membrane, improving permeability and again the resistance towards um, external stress factors. Note that here oxygen is required to be present um, for the steroid synthesis pathway, hence um, supplying small amount of oxygen will be beneficial during this process for, say, um, the application of micro-oxygenation. So, known the various requirements by yeast at different stage, um, an artist has developed a range of complex nutrients, um, aka blends of various nutrient elements. Within this range, we have Nutriform Energy, uh, Nutriform Aroma Plus, Nutriform Events, and Nutriform No Stop. Both Nutrifer Energy and Aroma Plus are complex blends of amino acids, vitamins, essential minerals, and yeast derivatives. These two products are be used at inoculation or 24 hours after the onset of fermentation. The key difference between the two products are their organic nitrogen source, hence um, the different proportion and composition of the different amino acids in the blend. Nutriform energy contains amino acids that can be quickly absorbed and used in protein synthesis, hence producing the building blocks for yeast cell wall. Um, this product focuses on building up the yeast biomass at the initial stage. The ratio of free amino acids is higher in Nutriform Aroma Plus, as besides the amino acids used for the biomass buildup, it also contains free amino acids um, who act as aromatic precursors and they're usually moderately absorbed. So Nutriform Aroma Plus would be a great tool for you to boost up the aromatic intensity and complexity for a neutral variety, or a wine intended for a lower quality tier, um, for example, a pressing fraction of a white wine. If we take a closer look at the breakdown and dominant groups of various amino acids in the blend, you can see that for Nutriform Energy here, um, glutamic acids and serine have the highest concentration um, amount of blend. So these amino acids are responsible for, for yeast growth, multiplication of yeast population, and the thickening of cell wall. 
for neutrophil aroma plus, um, phenylalanine and valine have the highest concentration, and these serve as aroma precursors. So during fermentation, um, they will produce higher alcohol and then under presence of um, acetyltransferase, which is an enzyme activity, the higher alcohol converts to the aromatic uh, esters. So for example, the corresponding higher alcohol for um, phenylalanine is 2-phenylethanol, which then gets turned into 2-phenylethylacetate. An ester responsible for notes such as roses and flowers. Valine's corresponding higher alcohol is isobutanol, which then turns into isobutyl acetate, describes that sense of um, banana and tropical fruits. And leucine, here um, another amino acid, also produces fruity esters. Here we are presenting the data from a commercial trial on a Tempranilla wine carried out in 2013. Looking at two wines where all the wine acting factors and processing were kept constant except the use of defermentation nutrient. So to compare the explicit impact of nutrients on aromatic intensity of the wines. Looking at a treatment made with Nutriferm Energy in comparison the treatment with Nutriferm Aroma Plus had both a higher total concentration of a higher alcohol as well as ethyl esters. So for the FOS here, there is a 30% increase, and given the sensory threshold um, of these ester compounds are generally low, the difference is considered to be quite substantial. For the second part of nutrient addition, um, at one-third sugar depletion, an artist offers two nutrient blends, Nutrifirm Advance and Nutrifirm No Stop. So Nutrifirm events includes DEP, um, inactivated yeast, and cellulose. The DEP portion allows sugar transport proteins to maintain their vital activity through completion of alcoholic fermentation. The lipids from inactivated yeast will strengthen yeast cell wall to provide resistance towards um, elevated alcohol content. And a fraction of cellulose absorbs short-term fatty acids via a synergistic action. These short-chain fatty acids are considered toxic given that they inhibit yeast metabolism. So by absorbing them, you're essentially detoxifying your media. Nutrifirm No Stop, on the other hand, does not contribute any nitrogen. So it's a blend of preparation of yeast cells walls and vitamin B1. And this product is designed more specifically for sluggish, stock fermentation, or juice with the high potential alcohol content, hence when yeast has a higher chance of experiencing a stressful environment. The preparation of yeast cell walls contain unsaturated long-chain fatty acids and steroids. And as we mentioned previously, um, they provide resistance um, to yeast towards the external osmotic stress. It also contains micronutrients and vitamins. Again, assisting yeast metabolism and minimizing the chances of yeast producing hydrogen sulfide and mercaptans under stress. So to put these products in perspective of timeline and a brief outline of Inarda's uh, recommended protocol, the desired yen level is based on sugar um, conversion to alcohol, having 150 ppm as the baseline for nutrient threshold. The higher the bricks, the higher level of total yen target it should be. So at 21 bricks, we recommend a total target of around 200 to 250 ppm yen. At 23 bricks, this get elevates to um, 250 to 300 ppm. And if the bricks level exceeds 25, the total target should be around 300 to 350 ppm yen. And it's always a good idea to have your initial yen level in juice um, analyzed prior to inoculation. Based on the number, the external supplementation required will be equivalent to the total target yen minus the initial juice yen. And again, we recommend fractioning that number into two portions. First half at inoculation or 24 hours after onset of fermentation, where you can either choose to use new firm energy or if you would like to accentuate your aromatic profile, use Nutrifirm Aroma Plus. And then at one third sugar depletion, add your second half of external nutrients using Nutrifirm Advance. 
If you're experiencing a slowdown in fermentation or reduced kinetics, on top of the Nutriferm event, you can add Nutriferm No Stop to help keep up with your yeast metabolism. Each product has its own recommended dosage, and um, this information can be accessed on the technical data sheet available on the website. So as a recap, um, here are the following topics we've covered in this webinar. First of all, the difference between inorganic nutrient and organic nutrient, the um, chemistry background of how yeast uptakes um, primary amino acids and ammonia, the importance of essential minerals and vitamins, steroids and fatty acids, as well as an artist's range of complex nutrients, Nutrifirm Energy and Nutrifirm Aroma Plus, which are the two organic blends to be used during a lag phase of fermentation, Nutrifirm Events, which contains step for use during exponential phase, and Nutrifirm No Stop, designed to assist with slush, uh, sluggish or stuck fermentation. And this concludes our webinar today. If you have any inquiries or questions, my email and our New Zealand manager, Shirley's email, are listed below. And I just want to quickly say that right now, all around the world, everyone's experiencing a um, difficult time given the current COVID-19 situation. With many government instructions and rules around business operations, this will potentially impose some difficulties to wineries. And being wine production, we're very lucky to be considered as an essential industry and still being able to operate. Um, our grape and wine community has always been very resilient, and we have no doubt that as an industry together, we'll get through this with each other's support. So we wish everyone to stay safe and best of luck with the 2020 vintage. Thank you very much.